So this is a list I don't want to be correct about. <laughs> How are you? I hope you're all good. Today we're gonna to be doing a very interesting video. We're gonna be doing three star predictions. Not five star predictions, three star predictions. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. We're gonna be chatting about the books that I wanna read, obviously. I own them, they're on my TBR but I'm a bit nervous. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna love them. There's reasons that make me think they may just be a bit, like, average. I couldn't do one star predictions because I don't own any books I think I'm gonna give one star, but, like, three stars, yeah. There's some books I'm a little bit nervous about, a little bit trepidatious <laughs> about reading. So we're gonna be chatting about the 10 of those and then we'll react to this video once I have read all these books, which I do not know when that will be. Probably, like, 10 years in the future, but we'll react to it and we'll see how on point I was. But before we get into the video, I want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is Boxu. Boxu is a Japanese snack subscription, which I absolutely love. Each month has a unique theme, and this month is Prefecture Passion. So it's got snacks from all the different prefectures of Japan. So you're kind of on like a guided taste tour of Japan. Every edition has this culture guide where you can see where all the different snacks in the box come from. You get so so many snacks like there is so much in this box it's so hot whoa it's very hard to demonstrate it to you I just want to have a bite of this one this is like a yuzu souffle look oh my god it's so cute mmm it's like a cute little fluffy cake let's give it a go mmm mm, mm. it's like really lemony oh my god it's so good so yeah you get a little bit of information about all the different snacks in the box it tells you like the flavor profiles and stuff like that it gives you a little description a little bit of history around the snack i think coming up to the festive season this would be such a good gift for people anyone in your life who enjoys maybe japanese culture or just food like snacks in general i think this would be such a great christmas gift you can use my code make with books for 10 percent off your japanese snack subscription and not only would you be getting them a christmas gift but you would technically be gifting them a chance to win free tickets to Japan which is so exciting so Boxy are running a competition at the moment and they're picking five lucky winners to win some tickets to Japan which is so exciting and it's anyone who has a subscription before December 31st so make sure you use my link down below and my code make with books to get Boxy give it a go get 10% off your order and also get a chance of winning free tickets to Japan I'll include a link in the description and also make sure you check out all the terms and conditions before you enter so let's talk about the books Firstly, this one may surprise people. We have got The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. So, what the fuck? many of you will know my favorite genre is mystery. So you're like, Megan, you should love it. <laughs> but Karen M. McManus scares me. This isn't her most famous book. Her most famous book is like One of Us is Lying, Two Can Keep a Secret, that series. But I don't own them. I own this. I got it, I think in an Illumicrate box, like at the end of last year. Haven't read it. I know this is about like this rich and glamorous family, but like four children children are suddenly dropped by their mother with a single sentence, you know what you did. And then like the cousins receive an invitation to go to the old family house. Ah. I feel like Karen Ann McManus scares me as an author because she's one of the most popular like YA mystery authors, but I just don't know if I'm going to vibe with her writing. I've heard some people say, oh my god, Megan, you're going to love it. And I've heard some people say, no. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know what to expect going into it. Let me know if you've read it. I'm gonna read this before I try out like One of Us is Lying or anything like that and see how I feel. But I'm worried it's gonna be a bit simple, like a bit more, cause you know, I don't mean that cause it's YA. I mean, I love the Good Girls Guide to Murder series, but I just feel like this is gonna be more simple. So I'm not, yeah, I'm a bit nervous about this one. Then we've got one that I'm, I'm literally gonna get attacked for and rightly so. It's what she deserves. Like, you can attack me for this, you can yell at me, you can unsubscribe, don't unsubscribe. But one that I'm very nervous is gonna be a three star is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. Now, <laughs> I have no reason to expect this. I have no reason to think this, really, because I gave The Hate You Give and On The Come Up both, like, five stars, I think, or, like, four to four 
five stars, somewhere in that bracket. So I love Andrew Thomas's writing, right? Like I love it. So like, why am I saying this? The reason I'm saying this is because I read the first chapter of this for a try chapter tag that I did like in the summer and I didn't like it that much. Like I really did not vibe with the first chapter. I was like, I'm not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it. So needless to say, I didn't pick it to read in that video, but it has made me so scared. Like this before that video was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna read that book soon. And now I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I just didn't like the first chapter but the first chapter can be like not indicative of the book as a whole so that's just what I gotta tell myself. Then we've got a book I am gonna be reading this month in a well yeah in a week or two and it's The King of Crows by Libba Bray. So <laughs> My experience with the Diviner series, I love the concept. I love a lot of Libra Bray's writing, right? I gave, spoken about this before, The Diviners, four stars. Lair of Dreams, five stars. Before the Devil Breaks You, 2.5 stars. <laughs> and then this is the last one in the series and I've heard it's not good. I have not heard many good things about this book. Like even people who love the series, like gave them all five stars, did not like this. They didn't like it. And now I'm gonna read it in like a couple weeks. So many of you will know it's set in New York in 1920s. We're following these characters who kind of have these special abilities, but like, I don't know. 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 I'm nervous. I'm very, very nervous. I want to love it, but am I going to? And then the next one is because I've read from this author once and I just thought it was okay. Like I thought that book was okay. And that book was much more hyped than this one. And it's The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. So I picked this up recently. It's a brand new release. I picked up for a pound in my local uh, charity shop. My name's Missy and I love shopping with coupons. Couponing's not just, you know, grocery shopping for me. It's a way of life. I read The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell and it was like fine. I read it actually for the reading rush last year and I enjoyed it. Like it was a very quick read for its length. Like it, I flew through it, but the ending annoyed me <laughs> and I felt like a lot of it was just kind of like meh, like, mm. Like, you know. I know this one is about a woman who goes missing in like 2017 and then someone I think kind of like finds the body or something like that in 2018. We're kind of following these two different storylines. On the back it says, a missing woman, an abandoned mansion, a family hiding a terrible secret. So I'm excited to read it because I know it's gonna be like a fast paced, quick thriller, but I'm not holding out much hope because I didn't love the family upstairs and that was much, like much more widely hyped. It's one that I'm probably gonna read soon because it won't take me long to read it, but at the same time, I'm not expecting like it to move mountains. Don't be Don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? Next one. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to read it, okay? I don't want to read it. It's been panned. No one really likes it. Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I have read three Riley Sagers. I have read Lock Every... You can, oh, you can see it. Lock Every Door gave it four stars. Home Before Dark gave it 3.5 stars. And The Last Time I Lied, which I just read, 4.5 stars. So that's like pretty good. That's a pretty good average for an author. This, no one's liked it. No one is liked it. <laughs> I believe it's about a girl who gets into this car with this guy who's giving her a lift throughout the night. And there's been a serial killer on campus and she starts to think it's him. It's him. It's about her having to survive the night. Now it is just only over 300 pages. It's quite short, but I've heard it's just a bit boring and it doesn't really like do anything. And it's just been panned. Like no one has liked it. Everyone has given it two stars. My patrons were talking about it on our discord. And like some of them were saying they actually laughed at the ending. It was that bad. Or like wanted to throw their book against the wall. It was that bad. Like it's laughably bad. So yeah, let me know if you've read this. I just feel like so everyone's hated it, but I am excited to read it because I've had pretty good success with everything else I've read from Mario Sega. I think there's only one other book I haven't read of his, Final Girls. I don't think he's got any other books. So I think I've almost read all of his stuff, which is kind of crazy. I haven't done that intentionally. Next is a bit of an obscure book and it is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. So I <laughs> bought this a long time ago. It's been 84 years. I've owned it for so long that part of why I'm putting it on this list is to hopefully make myself read it at some point. It's not long, it is only 220 pages, there's illustrations throughout, like it's not gonna take long to read, but I'm just not expecting anything like major from it. Like I'm not expecting like it to be a new favorite. I think it's probably just gonna be like a three star, like but not in a bad way, just like it's gonna be fine. It's a classical book about this woman who has lived like this very uptight life and she lives for a day and lives like this wild 
wild day in her life. So yeah, there's a movie of it. I've heard all right things, but like, I've just owned it for so long that like kind of my want to read it has diminished over time, which is kind of natural. It's why you should read your books as soon as you buy them and not accrue 170 unread books. <laughs> Drag her, slay her, read her, sipping on that treaty, hunty. Then we have Shine by Jessica Jung. This is a K-pop contemporary book written by like a k-pop star she's a k-pop star she was in girls generation like back in the day and then this is a contemporary like ya she's written about like the k-pop industry again this just hasn't had like amazing reviews like a contemporary has to be like a ya contemporary has to be out of this world for me to give it like a five star like i typically read them i maybe listen to the audiobook and i'm like okay it, it's fine like it was enjoyable but it wasn't like amazing and that's just how I think I'm gonna feel about this one it's another one I do want to read because it was sent to me by a publisher and it's been on my TBR for a really long time so I do just want to read it and I'm interested to read a book about the k-pop industry about the kind of this toxic work culture that um, a lot of the idols and like young kids like trying to get into the industry have to experience but I'm not expecting like it to be a new favourite, essentially. Okay, then we have a book that I'm actually very excited to read and I'm okay with it being probably like a three star. And that is Hashtag No Escape by Gretchen McNeil. So I just read Hashtag Murder Trending with my patrons for our Patreon book club and there was very mixed reviews, very mixed opinions. The live show for it was so much fun because everyone was just dragging the book to fill. I gave it, I think, a 3.5. I really enjoyed some aspects of it. The ending let it down for me, but like <laughs> the book is ridiculous. Like it's trashy, it wasn't very well written. It's it's stupid, like some stupid plot twist, and some bad writing, like the descriptions, oh we don't need to get into it, we dragged it to fill, but the descriptions of clothing, like, yo, we do not need to hear about the next tall dress this girl is wearing, I don't give a fuck. Clap if you care. Clap if you, clap if you care. I had a lot of fun doing the book club with them for that book, but... I don't like expect anything major from this book, having read from this author before. The writing wasn't amazing, but it's a fun, trashy read. Like you can enjoy a three star because it's trashy and fun, but objectively no, like it's not very good. And that's kind of how I feel about this series. I feel like I'm gonna enjoy the experience of reading them, but then afterwards I'm gonna be like, that was stupid. Like that was ridiculous. So I am excited to read this one. This is kind of like a spin-off. And this one's about like escape rooms, like locked escape rooms and puzzles and like death and shit. So yeah, I'm excited to like read more of this trashy horror, but it's not gonna be highly rated, I don't think. The next one is gonna upset some people again. It's gonna upset some people, and you know what? I'm okay with that. The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Can you believe I even own this book? Cause I can't. What? I bought this for a video right at the start of my YouTube channel, like two years ago probably. Um, I don't think I even bought it. I think, was I gifted it or did I buy it? I can't remember. I just don't think it's for me. It's just not for me. It's just not gonna be for me. It's not for me, Mark. You can also include A Court of Thorns and Roses in this. I feel the same about them. They were for the same video. I can't remember what they were for. Like I genuinely can't remember. Listen, I just, I draw a line at the tail. I draw a line at the tail. I can't take it. I don't think I can read about it. I draw a line at his tail. Like, no. No, 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 no. So yeah, I just don't know if this like kind of like popular YA fantasy is gonna be for me. I own it, so I do want to read it at some point, but I also don't. It's gonna be like a three star. I already know it. I feel like I'm not gonna love it. It's gonna be like a three star and that's okay, but it's gonna be a three star and I'm gonna read it one day and I'm gonna read the series and I'm gonna do it but that, it, that moment isn't now. And then finally, we have Star Daughter by Shetha Shakar. This is a gorgeous edition. It's a very special book for me. This was the first fairy loot book I ever received. I ever, when I started working with them, this was my first box. And so it feels very special to me and I love the gold sprayed edges. I just remember my, like, the moment I unboxed this was such like, a joyous moment for me. So I feel like a lot of love towards this book, but it is not highly rated. I think if I were to do reading the lowest rated books on my TBR video, which which I do want to do one day. I hope you'll do that soon because I want to do highest rated again, but I feel like I should do lowest rated before I do that. I feel like this would be on there. So maybe I'll do that video and read this. I don't know, but it hasn't been highly rated. It's about this girl who like is descendant from the stars and she has to go into this like competition to defend her family or something. And it's just not had great reviews. It just hasn't done great. So that is why it's on this list, but I am excited to read it because it feels like such a special 
book for me but I feel like I'm not going to be the outlier in terms of views for this book. So there we have it, those are my 10 3 star predictions. Let me know what you think of any of these books, which ones you think I'm going to be correct on, which ones you think I'm not going to be correct on. I really enjoyed this video, it's a bit different than the 5 star predictions videos but I love making predictions and I love reacting to them, they're like some of my favourite things to do, I'm kind of obsessed with it, like I'm always thinking how can I react to something? Because it just brings me so much joy and pain at the same time. <laughs> if you've gotten to the end of this video, comment a star emoji. Thank you again also to all my patrons. I just want to give you guys a little shout out in this video because I appreciate everything you guys do and all your support and our little community so, so much. So the link is always down below if you want to come join us. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye!